Okay. Mm. Can't can't prove anything about this yet, and I don't I don't, I don't want to even. So I want to press everything first, but yeah, penetrating wound that suggests something sharp. A sharp metal object. Do you have proof of that? Didn't you see the victim's wound, worthless prosecutor? Fatal blow was a stab to the throat, and a knife perfectly matches up with that. There can be no other explanation. Hmm. Seems they don't know about that piece of information yet. Wahaha! Nothing to say. Speechless, aren't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Right, next. There's plenty more to my reasoning. Prison maintains strict control over potentially lethal items. Except chisels, apparently. Do we have a picture of chisels? They are not in the photo. Nope. Even with the strict control, there were still some items that could be used, right? Well, yeah. Things like grooming scissors. Jeez. Of course, there's more to this. Right, Sebastian? Exactly. At the time of the incident, only one was being borrowed. However, there was no reaction when we tested it for blood. Those would be the scissors Mr. Sawit was practicing with. So the inside of the prison was completely clear of sharp implements. So I have reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. Can you be more specific about where it came from? Of course I can! It didn't come from inside the prison. Is he trying to sound smart? Simon Keyes brought it in. That's what we mean. I mean, he sent it in. It was a delivery. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you even figure that much out? I'm disappointed in you. And you've disappointed me from the start. So Simon brought the murder weapon. But how, you ask? It's hidden inside that chessboard. No weapon was found at the crime scene. Not even inside the chessboard. So where did the murder weapon disappear to? I'd like to hear your answer to that. That's... Well, after the crime, the culprit must have hidden it somewhere in the prison. Is there a problem with the statement that the best just made? I think so, because I believe we have a note saying they checked the entire prison. The entire prison. You, personally. There is a very large problem, dude. The murder weapon is hidden inside the prison? I don't think so. It's clear from this piece of evidence that shows that the murder weapon can't be inside the prison. Well. This really isn't any sort of proof, because I'm sure it would be easy for him to miss certain certain places, certain hiding places. Have you completely forgotten your own actions? You, along with R Warden Roland, conducted a search of the prison. But you did not find the murder weapon, right? <laughs> that We must have overlooked something. This guy just completely contradicted himself. You carried out such a sloppy investigation? I'm amazed that you call yourself the best. Are you mocking me? Sebastian. Please calm yourself. Don't get caught up in the opponent's pace. I'm fine, Justine. Did you really think the best prosecutor would be shaken by someone miles behind him? Oh. Wish he'd stop messing around with other people's names. Oh, in that case, Kay Faraday, Faraday is far, far ahead. Kay, don't you get caught up in this too. Yes, if my best investigation didn't find anything, then there must not have been a single weapon in the prison. In that case, there's only one possibility. The criminal must have taken the murder weapon with him when he left the prison. So it's only natural we didn't find it in there. Yeah! There was no way the culprit could have brought the weapon out of the prison. And this piece of evidence shows why. Have you completely forgotten your own testimony? You 
That's twice you've insulted me. Oh? Seems you remember what I said earlier. But you'd do well to remember further than that. What is that? This guy, he really doesn't remember anything? It seems that way. The detention center and the prison are equipped with security gates. Anyone leaving must pass through these gates. Gates equipped with metal detectors. Ah! That's what you... Looks like he remembers now. Yes, there's no way someone could have brought the murder weapon through those gates. And so the criminal could not have taken it out of the prison either. Ah! So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know where this murder weapon went to? Perhaps the weapon is still inside the prison? But we couldn't find it anywhere in the prison! The reason you didn't find it is because you believed it to be a sharp metal object. We saw the very moment when Mr. Knightley was attacked, after all. After all. If you can say that much, then perhaps you could enlighten us. What would you say is the murder weapon in this case? From this piece of evidence, the murder weapon of this case becomes obvious. I guess it's the tape? I don't think it's obvious, though. Here is footage from a security camera. It shows one of the cells in the detention center. See it with your own eyes. Yeah, that actually looks more like his coat was thrown over his head by someone or something. What? This is... It can't be! This tape clearly shows the moment the victim was attacked by a black dog. I believe this is sufficient proof, wouldn't you say? Indeed, this is vital evidence. Horace Knightley was killed in the detention center by that dog. After that, the body was moved to the prison workroom. <clears throat> Our witness claims to have seen a dog in the workroom when the body was found. Of course, a dog couldn't have planned this crime on its own. Unless it was a really smart dog. However, there is someone who could have. That's enough. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney? It's true, this camera footage is vital evidence. However, there is something else you must prove. Actually, you've already noticed it, haven't you? It's just as she says, there's still a huge flaw in my reasoning. If that black dog is a prisoner's pet, how was it able to move between the detention center and prison? Ah! What will we do, Mr. Edgeworth? I still don't know how the dog managed to move from one place to the other. I knew it. What? You're one to talk. You don't, even, you don't know either. If you do not solve this mystery, I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic. If this was a real courtroom, I would call for a recess now. As opposed to a fake courtroom, it's, not, it's nothing. It's just a hallway. What? Wait! I'm not finished yet! Court has been adjourned. Leave it once. This isn't a courtroom. Well then, as I said, court is adjourned. I can't prove my argument, but isn't it the same case with Mr. Keys? Whatever do you mean? Just as I don't know how the dog entered the detention center, you also don't know how Simon Keys entered the det detention center in prison. Although he came to visit the victim, he was an outsider to the prison. Don't you think it would be difficult for him to commit a crime inside the prison? Judge Courtney, now the burden of proof lies with you. Show us evidence that Simon Keyes entered the prison. Ha ha. You want me pr to present evidence? I'm happy to oblige. What? She really have evidence? It's about time I told you. Now that I know the basis of your reasoning, 
Prosecutor Edgeworth. What is she thinking? Seems you don't even know Simon Keyes' real occupation. He is a circus performer. A circus performer? Yes. Have you ever heard of the Berry Big Circus? I have, actually. Circus? Ah! But of course, yesterday was a day that I wouldn't have missed for the world. Wouldn't have missed for the world? Should have some sort of kind of important meeting? Oh, heavens no. I despise meetings. It was the animal show, of course. Seems you've realized. On the day of the incident, an animal show was being performed at the prison. And the show was put on by the Berry Big Circus. So then, do you mean Simon is... Simon Keyes entered the prison as a staff member of the animal show. That we know for a fact. No! This woman. She's been concealing this fact the whole time. She only planned to reveal it after hearing my reasoning. Come to think of it. What are you doing, Justine? Don't put it in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words are on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? Mr. DeBest was going to say it then, but she stopped him. Wah ha ha ha! How do you like that, worthless prosecutor? You didn't do anything! Well then, now it really is time for a recess. I'll end with some advice. I had already doubted your abilities as a prosecutor, which is why I relieved you of your authority. You'd best not forget that. What are you trying to say? The PIC can still take away your badge. If you value your badge, I'd advise you not to show your face before me again. Is that a threat? The goddess of law is merciful, but that doesn't mean you can get away with everything. And one more thing. I must digress. I suggest you stop with this defense attorney act. That's none of your concern. I don't intend to abandon the to abandon a case I am involved in so easily. For defense attorneys, a relationship of mutual trust with their client is vital. It is very different from the way the prosecutor way of the prosecutor. In any case, you didn't even know about your client's occupation. Hmm. Well then, I must be going. May the blessings of the goddess of law be upon you. Did Simon lie to us? Seems he lied to Uncle Ray, too. This complicates matters. Why'd he do that? Hey, hey, Miles. Don't tell me you've got a cold, got cold feet already. Courtney Pie is quite a ha handful. Giving up is un still uncool. A defense attorney's creed is to never give up. Remember, you're my assistant. Of course. I don't plan on giving up either. It's just my theory that he couldn't enter the prison no longer holds. Looks like we'll have to investigate once more.